going to start by sewing the button tabs of my sleeve. I'm going to fold the seam allowance on the short edge over to the wrong side and then fold it in half right sides together down the long edge. I like to just pop that under my overlocker and let the foot hold it in place so then I can turn the seam allowance of the bottom short edge fold it over so my sides are together. Now you could pin along this edge but I'm just going to sew it because it's quite short. When I'm sewing I'm going to just be trimming off about two or three millimeters because my seam allowance is one centimeter and I know that my overlocking measures 0.7. Trim off the tails of your thread so that you've got a bit left on each side. Take a darning needle and thread the tails into the darning needle and then just sew those tails back into that overlocking seam so that you don't have any stray threads at the end. Trim the excess thread. Now we're going to do the other side. Threading into the darning needle and sewing it back into that seam allowance. And this will give you a nice neat edge when you turn it through. And that's ready to be turned through. Next, I'm going to take my ruler turner. I'm going to thread that through going to hook the turner at the seam allowance edge because that's the strongest edge and I'm just going to gently bring this through. Now I want to be careful when I do this not to sort of overstretch and just sliding that through and if those edges poke out a bit you can just use your darning needle to tuck that seam allowance back in and you can see that is nice and neat it looks like it's going thin in the middle there but when I give that a press that's going to sit nice and flat and it's ready for me to do the buttonholes so now I'm going to do the second one next I'm going to sew the buttonhole onto my button tab so my button tab once the seam allowances have been sewn is one centimeter I've pressed it so that the seam is down the side because that's just easier. You can choose to do it um, down the middle if you prefer, but I think that would make sewing the buttonhole harder. The button I'm using is the same width as my button tab. So if you had bigger buttons, you would want to make your button tab wider. I find that it helps to sew the button tab by sewing um, with a piece of tissue paper underneath the fabric because it helps stabilize it. It also can help just to make your buttonhole stitch not quite so narrow because the fabric is so stretchy. Start by sewing a couple of stitches and hold the tails of your thread and that helps guide the fabric through the machine. So you may need to just straighten up a little bit. Checking the length of my buttonhole and I'm going to finish the buttonhole. So when I'm going back up I find that it helps to hold the paper and the tab to help guide that through. it out from under the machine. I'm just going to trim those threads and then I can just peel that off the tissue paper and pull out any stray bits of paper and there I have a nice neat little um, buttonhole. So you may find that setting your sewing machine to a manual buttonhole is easier than having your preset buttonhole simply because of the stretch in the material and when it goes down and backwards it might stretch at different rates.
If you find that your material is too fine to sew a decent buttonhole, you can always use a non-stretch fabric. So here I have a Liberty Lawn, which is nice and fine, so it's not going to feel rough on my skin um, compared to the softness of the jersey. So again, I'll sew it in the same way. So I'm going to fold the seam allowance back on the short edge, folding right sides together. Set my sewing machine just to a regular straight stitch. Put it underneath the foot to hold it in place. So first few stitches and back tack. Turn the seam allowance back on the other short end, folding the right sides together. And I'm just going to hold that firmly and sew down. Trim those threads and take my rouleau turner. I don't need to finish this edge at all because it's going to be on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to turn this through like so. Tuck those edges in. And that's a nice, neat little button tab. So I'm just going to sew the other one and give that a press. Okay, so now I've pressed my little Liberty Lawn button tab and I'm going to sew the buttonhole. Now I'm going to use the tissue paper again because even though this lawn is a nice stable fabric uh, and it sews beautifully, the fact that the button tab is so narrow makes it quite tricky. So. Again, setting my sewing machine to the buttonhole. And I sew a couple of stitches. Hold the tails of the thread and sew down. Back back. And holding the paper and the tab firmly to go back. the buttonhole and taking it out from under the machine, trimming the threads and peeling off the paper and you can see I have a nice buttonhole. So here's the comparison of the two buttonholes, one on the Liberty Lawn and one on the Jersey. So you can see on the Jersey, it does stretch a little bit, but by the time that's fastened and the button's on, you don't really notice that. Next, I'm going to open the buttonhole. It's a good idea when making buttonholes, um, just to pop a pin in at, away from where you're going to cut to prevent yourself from actually accidentally pushing too hard and going too far. The other thing I find with a jersey buttonhole is that it helps to make them perhaps a little bit smaller than you would necessarily cut normally because of the stretchiness in the fabric. So just make your cut slightly smaller, take your button and push it through and if that's nice and snug Leave it at that so you can see here my button cut is substantially smaller than my buttonhole and I like to cut from the short end or the finished end down the length that way I know that I'm not going to accidentally cut too close to that edge. Next we're going to sew our button tab onto the sleeve. So I've marked the position of the button tab on the wrong side of the fabric of the sleeve and I've used a friction pen which is a pen that will disappear with heat. But just always do a tester first on fabric because it may not disappear on some fabrics. So I'm going to put the sleeve under my machine and then I'm going to take my button tab. Now the side with the paper 
I like to have underneath so that when the button is done up you won't see if there's any residual bits of paper but when you wash your t-shirt they will come out or you can just pick them out as well. So we're going to sew this on with a square. So I'm just going to put it under the machine. So a couple of stitches. So down one centimetre. Lift the foot and pivot, so across the tab, which is a centimetre, needle down and pivot. So back up, needle down to pivot, and back across to complete the square. And take that out of the machine. So there you can see. I have sewn my button tab on with a little square and then on the right side, I'll just trim those threads, a little bit of bunch in there, trim them up, and then on the right side all you can see is a small square and what we're going to do is sew a button on top of that square. So I'm going to take my needle. Now I like to sew with four threads. So what I'm going to do is I take some thread, a nice long length of it, fold it in half, slide that fold up and down the needle to make it nice and sharp so that I can easily thread my needle. slide those threads down and then I've got four threads and I find this makes the neater sewing for sewing on a button. Trim that. So on the wrong side I'm just going to sew my needle through like so. And bring it up and I'm just going to do a stitch to hold it in place and then I'm going to sew the button on. So because we're sewing the button onto the button tab it means that we don't need to reinforce the material behind so even though it's a jersey and it would potentially um, make holes if we didn't have something behind it because we've got the button tab there we can just use that to support the button. Okay, so I just go through twice. Bring the needle back through to the back. Just check that it's nice and neat on the front. And over sew three times to finish off. And then I like to just knot my thread again. So that it's ready to go to sew on the other one. So from the right side you can see I've got my button sitting on top of my square and on the wrong side my button tab is hanging down neatly ready to be fastened. So now I'm going to sew the other side. Next, I'm going to sew the neckband. So here I have my neckband. I'm going to fold it in half, right sides together, and I'm going to sew the center back, which is the short edge. I'm just going to overlock that. And trim those threads. Like so. Next, I'm going to fold the neckband in half, wrong sides together, and I'm just going to pop a pin in at the center back, and then where I've marked my notches, I'm also going to pop pins in. Now, I like to do little snips, but just make sure that if you're going to snip jersey and with such a small seam allowance, you want to do teeny tiny little snips. So I put a pin in, at the snip notch and then I like to just pop a pin in halfway between so I'm just going to work my way round 
folding it over wrong sides together, pinning at the notch and then pinning in between. So that was my centre front. Now I've got the shoulder notch, pop a pin in there, pin that halfway and then pin halfway between the centre back and the shoulder. So there's my neck band ready to go. Next I'm going to overlock my shoulder seam. So I've got right sides together, I'm going to lift the overlocking foot and I'm going to sew along that edge. So again because my seam allowance is one centimetre I can trim off just a smidgen because my overlocking is uh, 0.7 wide and I've got it set to four threads because that's the strongest and I'm not using any other stitching. So I'm going to sew along that edge. I like to do a technique that's called chaining on. So rather than cutting off the thread, I just match up my opposite shoulders and I just carry on sewing. Then I trim the threads. Like so. So when I do my sewing, I like to sew the front over the back because then when my seam allowance is pressed towards the back on the shoulder seam, I've got the right side of the overlocking on top. But that's just an aesthetic thing, it doesn't actually matter. So give that a press with the shoulders to the back. So I'm going to take my t-shirt and I've marked the centre front and the centre back with tiny notches again because I don't want them to be too big. And I'm going to put a pin in just at that centre back notch. I don't really bother pinning the neck band to the t-shirt because I like to have the flexibility to be able to stretch and manipulate the band as I go. So I just have that one at the centre back and then I put the t-shirt and neck band under the foot of the overlocker and I've got the neck band on top and I just sew a few stitches to hold that in place like so then I take the pin out of the middle section match the shoulder points and then give that a little pull so that the neck band is stretched to fit the t-shirt but the t-shirt section is not stretched at all so I'm just trimming off about two or three mil because my seam allowance is one centimeter and my overlocking width is 0.7. Next I'm going to match the centre front notches together again giving that a little pull and sewing around. So this material I've got lucky with it's not particularly rolly some fabrics that I use do roll a lot when I sew them so I find that keeping the pins in the neck band really helps control the rolling but I still don't find that I need to pin the actual neck band because that's on a curve and the curve doesn't seem to roll quite so much as the straight edge. So giving that a little pull. And when I get close to a pin I take it out because I really don't want to sew through those pins and chip my overlocking blades. So now I'm at the other shoulder, taking out my last pin, giving that a little stretch towards the centre bar, snapping that into place. And then I'm just going to over sew my overlocking because I went in on an angle. And coming off like so, so that's nice and neat. So now I could just leave it like that and give it a press and then that would be sufficient for um, a finish but I plan to do a cover stitch twin stitching around the neckline because I think that'll look nice and I like to do that before I press. So here I've got my cover stitch set up. I like to use a woolly nylon on the third thread and then I've got two very strong threads for the middle sections because I like to sew quite a bit of knit and um, light crow and I find that those threads are the strongest. A regular thread doesn't really um, always work so well on this particular machine. Uh, I've got it set up with white so I've got a nice contrast stitching. So I'm going to start from the back. So I'm flattening out the back. 
and I've got it set up for two threads and I'm just going to sew around. So I've got my thread um, needle set up for the left and the middle and I've got the markers on the front of my foot. So what I like to do is use the marker for the right needle to go along the seam to keep myself nice and straight. To the centre back, I just like to trim those threads before I over sew. The needles up, lift the foot, bring those threads to the front, cut them and sharply pull to the back and then trim those threads. And there you can see that twin stitching. So I think that white is a really nice contrast and I'm going to use white buttons on the sleeve tabs. So I think that will look really good. So now I'm going to give that a press. Okay, so now I'm ready to sew the sleeves onto my t-shirt. So I've pressed the neck band. I'm going to open the t-shirt out so that it's flat. And I've got a single notch on the front sleeve and no notches on the back sleeve. So that's how I know which is the back and which is the front. So no notch there and a single notch for the front. And I have a notch for the sleeve head. So first of all, I'm just going to match the sleeve head and put a pin in. And that's the only pin I'm going to use. I find that using too many pins can actually make putting in sleeves harder than easier. Trust your judgment and just know that it is designed to fit, so it will. So I'm going to lift the foot, pop the fabric underneath, so the sleeve is on top of the body of the t-shirt, and I've got right sides together, and I just sew a few stitches to hold it in place. Then I just snap that those two edges of the seams together. Sewing up towards the shoulder. Then I put the two notches of the front sleeve together and then just give that a little pull to snap those edges together. And then match the ends. Come off the edge and trim that seam like so. Now I'm going to do the other side. When you've completed both seams of your sleeves, open out the t-shirt and just give it a press with the sleeves going towards the shoulder. Okay, so I've pressed my shoulder seams and it's time to sew the underarm and side seam. So starting from the sleeve edge, right sides together, Pin the wrist area together, or if you're like me, you're just going to sew it without any pins. So I'm going to lift the foot of my overlocker and start sewing to hold it in place. Then I just pinch the underarm seams together, like so. Give that a little pull. Find the halfway mark. Sew along to the elbow. I say halfway mark, there isn't a mark, it's just a mark in my mind for the elbow. So holding it at the underarm. Sewing up to that underarm seam and then I'm just going to match the hem edges and find the halfway point. Carry on that seam. Pause and take that hem edge together again and carry on. And trim those seams, like so. And you can see that's very quick and easy. So now I'm going to sew the other side. <laughs> 
Next, I'm going to hem my sleeves. So before I turn the t-shirt through, I'm going to hem them because I'm using my cover stitch machine and this is how I like to do it. So I'm going to turn the, the seam allowance up 1.5 centimeters on the sleeve cuff. Now you could, if you wanted to, actually draw a line with chalk or an erasable pen um, showing where that fold line is because with the cover stitch you're sewing on the right side which can make it a little bit tricky but I find that it's just as easy to turn it up and to just start sewing. So I'm going to pop it under the machine. What I do when I'm sewing this because I've done it quite a lot and I'm familiar with the sort of spaces in between I look at where the space from the edge of the foot is to the fold of the fabric and I use that as my guide um, because I know that from the left hand needle to that edge is 1.5 if I've got about a 3 mil gap between the edge of the foot and the fold of the fabric but your machine might be different so just do what feels comfortable to you. I like to trim those threads. Over sew lift the needles, lift the foot, bring the threads forward and snip and pull out the back. And there you can see I've got my nice twin stitching for the cuff. So now I'm going to do the other side. Okay, so now that I've sewn both of my cuffs, I'm going to turn the t-shirt through to the right side and I'm going to sew the hem. So I've only allowed a one centimetre hem on this t-shirt because it has a curved hem and sometimes if you have a deeper seam allowance with a curved hem it can cause it to twist. This may not happen with most knit fabric so if you wanted to make a deeper hem you certainly could uh, but you just want to perhaps do a test at first because some fabrics just don't seem to stretch as much. So now I'm going to start sewing the hem. I'm going to use the cover stitch machine again and I'm just going to turn it up one centimeter and if you want to sort of do it how it would be done in industry you'd actually start from the left hand side. Again you could draw the line of the edge that you want to use um, of the fold line for hemming it and that would be a good little trick too if you were going to use the twin needles on your regular sewing machine as well. So I just fold up and sort of snap it into place and carry on. I find that if you do it in this method it really does prevent any sort of twisting from happening. sewing, needles up, lift the foot, threads forward, snip and pull. And there we go. My t-shirt is now complete and all I have to do is give that a press. So here it is, the finished tee. Nice wide open neckline, slightly dropped shoulder, slightly shaped hem and of course these gorgeous little button tabs and I love having the white stitching and the white button as a contrast to the overall look of the fabric but if I had used my little um, Liberty tabs they would have looked gorgeous as well. So this is a great little stash busting project doesn't take very long to make especially if you don't do things like having top stitching around the neck or and you of course can make it without the button tabs if you choose to so have fun with your makes don't forget post it on social media 
at Patton Union, hashtag Eva T.